Hi, this is Yawan, and today I would love to share this brickwork quilt project. This one is another approachable, relatively easy jelly roll quilt pattern. The finished measurements of this quilt are about 55 and a half inch by 63 and a half inch, and the measurement of each block is about eight and a half inch square. For this project, you will need a bundle of jelly roll strip. So you want to find the one that has 42 strips in one bundle. If you wonder what kind of fabric line that I use for this quilt, I actually did combine several lines, but I would say about 60% of these strips are combination from French general fabrics. The free pattern can be downloaded at yoanstoringstudio.com. I will have the link in the description box down below. So I hope you enjoyed this video and let's get started. First, we're going to work on the cutting. So lay out your jelly roll strip. Feel free to stack up multiple strips at a time to speed up the cutting process. First, we're going to cut the selvage end. Now take your ruler and then measure six and a half inch. So here I'm aligning the edges of the jelly roll with the six and a half inch point mark and then cut. And then go ahead and measure another six and a half inch and cut. And we're going to call this fabric one. Now my strip started to get a little wavy here. So I'm just going to start from the opposite end now. Let's trim off the selvage end. And then next you want to measure five and a half inch and cut. Now let's measure another five and a half inch and cut. And this will be fabric two. For the fabric three, you want to measure three and a half inch and then cut and then go ahead and cut another one. And for the fabric four, you want to measure two and a half inch and then cut and then cut another one also two and a half inch. So we should end up with a little bit of fabric left. I'm just going to toss this into my scrap bin for future scrappy projects. So in one strip, you should get in total of eight fabrics, two of each fabric, one, two, three, and four. We're going to cut all 42 strips in the same manner from which we're going to end up with 84 pieces of each fabric, one, two, three, and four. We're going to start by piecing fabric one and fabric four. So go ahead and grab one of each, lay them right sides together, and then sew with quarter of an inch of seam allowance. To make this much quicker, you can do chain piecing. So set up your fabrics nearby. Now grab fabric one and four and then stitch them together. And then without cutting the thread, you want to grab another pair and then continue stitching. So you can continue on stitching for as much as you can and don't think too much about it as long as the two fabrics are not the same kind. Once you've done chain piecing, cut the thread so that this will become individual pieces. And then press the seams towards any direction. There is no particular order for this one. I typically press my fabrics towards the darker fabric. So you should end up with 84 pieces of this. And we're going to call these panels combo A. Now we're going to sew fabric 2 and fabric 3 together. Just like before, I do chain piecing to make this super quick. Press the seams towards any directions. And voila, you should end up with 84 panels as well. And we're going to call these panels combo B. To make the block, you want to first take combo A and lay that with the fabric 4 at your left hand side and fabric 1 at your right hand side. And then take combo B with the fabric 2 at your left hand side and fabric 3 at your right hand side. Now take combo A again and this time you want to alternate the direction from the first row. Now take combo B and this time you want to alternate the direction from the first one. Alright, so this is how the layout should look like according to the name of the fabric. So you can go ahead and screenshot this or refer to the free PDF pattern that you can download on my website. To piece the block, we're going to start by sewing the first row and the second row. So go ahead and stitch them with quarter of an inch of seam allowance. Press the seams towards combo B. Now it is very important to keep the pressing direction consistent at this point. So you want to maintain the same uh, pressing direction for all the blocks. Next we're going to sew the third and the fourth row. Press the seams towards combo B. Alright, now let's join these two panels together. And press the seams towards combo A. 
All right, so our block is done. And if you see on the wrong side here, let me show you the pressing direction. So they're all consistent towards the bottom. You can go the opposite way, but make sure to keep it consistent for all the blocks. Continue piecing the blocks and you should make in total of 42 blocks. When you lay out the blocks, you want to start with the original layout, this one here, and then lay out the next block 180 degrees from the original layout or right at the opposite, just like shown here. For the next block, again, you want to alternate to the original layout. For the next row, you want to start from the opposite layout and then alternating in the same manner. Lay out your blocks in 7 rows and each row should have 6 blocks. Once you're happy with the layout, go ahead and sew the quick blocks together one row at a time. You should be able to nest the seams easily if you follow the pressing direction. I nest the seams as I go, but if you prefer to pin beforehand, you can go ahead and use your pins. Alternate the pressing direction of each row. So if you press the seams of the first row towards the right, you want to press the seams of the second row towards the left, and so on and so forth, so that when you sew the rows together, you'll be able to easily nest the seams. This time you may press the seams towards any direction. So let's continue joining the rows. I like to do two rows at a time. It's just easier to manage that way. And voila, my quilt blocks are already sewn together. Okay, now it's time to add the borders. So this time the pattern called for 4 inch wide border. First we're gonna sew the shorter border or border 1. As usual, I like to first match the center point and then pin and then pin the side edges as well. And then let's go ahead and sew this with quarter of an inch of seam allowance. And once you've done that, you want to press the seams towards the border. So go ahead and finish sewing your border. And once your quilt top is done, we're going to move on and do the rest of the steps of the quilting. So here I've already layered my quilt with the quilt batting and the backing fabric. And I've basted this with some pins. And then I went ahead and free motion quilt this with a simple swirly design, kind of meandering as well. If you don't know how to free motion quilt yet or your machine just couldn't handle this kind of technique, you can simply use your walking foot or hand quilting instead. Alright, once you've done quilting, go ahead and finish your quilt by binding it. So use your favorite binding method. I made my own binding tutorial video, so if you wish to check it out, I will link that somewhere in the description box down below. And that's pretty much it for this tutorial, so I hope you did enjoy. And happy sewing! Thank you so much for watching this video guys and until next time, goodbye!